One of the most common complaints from the Yu-Gi-Oh! community about broken and imbalanced cards in any given format is typically that they are far too generic. I'll go on record with saying that this is an idiotic mindset to have on some of these broken cards. In my opinion, these powerful cards need to be as generic as possible. I feel as though I've opened the floodgates making this statement, but please save your raging comments until the end. Let's take a look at some of the most broken cards of the last five or so years. Borlode Savage Dragon and Baron de Fleur. Synchro monsters both requiring only a tuner and non-tuner, as generic as a synchro monster can get. These two cards are inarguably strong, and every deck that can put these monsters on board benefit greatly from their Omni Negates and repetitive use. But keep in mind the archetypes that they were designed for. Boral Rockets and Fleurs. Predaplant Verte Anaconda, Apollosa Bow of the Goddess, and Access Code Talker. Three link monsters that are almost entirely generic, requiring only effect monsters for Verte and Access Code, and only differing monster names and no tokens for Apollosa. Very few decks can't turn out the materials needed to put any of these powerhouses on the field. And for the decks that are able to, they appreciate the Omni Negate from Apollosa, the removal from Access Code, and the immediate access to their fusion pool and or generic powerful fusion monsters in Verte. But once again, keep these monsters' original archetypes in mind. Code Talkers, Cybers Type, and Preta Plants. True king of all calamities, and we'll even put in a throwback with Lavalval Chain. Two completely generic Xyz monsters that are obviously overpowered, seeing that they've been worthy of remaining forbidden for years. Lavalval Chain, by comparison, is much more accessible than Calamities, where the vast majority of decks, competitive or otherwise, can turn out the two level 4 materials needed, whereas Calamities is a bit more restricted and most decks can't turn out multiple level 9 monsters on a consistent basis. For those that are able to, those decks widely benefit from the upgraded Foolish Burial effect from Lavalval Chain and the Mass Lockdown from True King of All Calamities, akin to what Dark Ruler No More accomplishes in today's meta, but with a little added spice. You know what I'm about to say, remember the archetypes that these were designed for, those being Laval and True King. Now, let's bring all of those archetypes back to the forefront. Boral, Rocket, Fleur, Code Talker, Predaplant, Laval, and True King. We're not going to change a single thing about the effects of their extra deck powerhouse monsters. However, let's say we change their summoning requirements to be strictly tied to their archetypes. Now, Borlode Savage Dragon requires a Rocket Tuner and Rocket Non-Tuner. Baron de Fleur requires a Fleur Tuner and a Fleur Non-Tuner. Access Code Talker requires 2 plus Code Talker and or Cybers Effect Monsters. Predaplant Verte Anaconda requires 2 Predaplant Effect Monsters. Apollosa Bow of the Goddess wasn't necessarily tied to an archetype, but let's change that to now requiring 2 plus Wind and or Fairy Monsters with different names that aren't tokens. Lavalval Chain requires two level 4 Laval monsters, and True King of All Calamities requires two or more level 9 True King monsters. First and foremost, yes, there is an argument to be had that this is a better balancing mechanism for these monsters, as they're now restricted to the decks they can be played in. But to argue against that, now only Preta Plants have the unbridled access to Red Eyes and Destiny Fusion, a la Verte Anaconda. Rockets now have the sole access to Borlode Savage Dragon's massive body and multiple negations. True Kings are the only deck that can utilize the mass lockdown from True King of All Calamities. Do you understand now? Want to know what doesn't change? The fact that your rogue dual avatar deck still can't contend against Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes, Tier Elements, Sprites, every Tier 0 and Tier 1 Menace deck of the game's history has their own set of overpowered extra deck monsters that can carry the deck. And these generic extra deck staples were secondary additions, but they were never a necessity for these decks to function. Now, the archetypes they were designed for had the exclusive access and the rogue decks that could have played them, having no other respectable options in the tools for their extra deck, are now rendered useless in every definition of the word. Look, I knew my Magnet Warrior deck was bad, but I'd drop the deck if Adamancipators were completely effect biased within their own archetype. I will never deny that tunes are beyond an unserviceable deck in every format. But if they were rejected from being able to play Saryuja Skulldred, Access Code Talker, and Psychic and Punisher, also Borolode Savage Dragon before the ban list, they would be another nostalgic collection in my binder and nothing else. What this does change, and maybe this is suitable for some with their complaints, but the power cap on these format defining decks are now lowered, and the archetypes of these once generic extra deck boss monsters is now bolstered. But that's not really the case. 
The lowered power cap is still relative to everything else in the format and would change very little to almost nothing about what decks would see top cut representation. Snake Eyes and Tier Elements still outclass Pure Predaplant and Pure Code Talker by an inconceivable metric. The archetypes that now gatekeep the extra deck monsters have never not had access to them, so saying that their strategy has now been improved is simply wrong. There's no discussion to be had. Ultimately, I'm steadfast in saying that the generic extra deck monsters and even generic staple main deck cards should be broken and overpowered. In fact, I'd go as far to say that they should be more busted. Changing that will only serve to ensure that we are constantly stuck in tier 0 formats because no other deck can ever hope to compete. Am I a fan of the formats that we essentially throw the same Omni Negates and Lockdowns at each other, fighting to build the exact same end board first? No, I'm not. But locking every deck except the specific archetype from using those generic broken extra deck monsters will create a true tier 0 format, in which every top cut deck list is 100% identical with no deviation from one another. This is the exact same argument that players cluelessly make when saying that getting rid of the ban list or taking ridiculous old banned cards off the list will fix the game. My Ignites will still lose just as hard to Fiendsmith with Pot of Greed at 3. Maybe even harder. Your anti-meta pile deck will not suddenly outclass whatever meta-dominant deck is the flavor of the week if you both have access to Last Will. Konami knows what they're doing when they design the next top contending archetype and or generic staple card. And I don't say that as an apologist, but as a harsh critic. Whether they want to acknowledge it or feign ignorance, they know how overpowered and oppressive, or how lackluster and useless every new card will be. At no point in time did they design the new Vendred support with the idea that it could suddenly compete against tier elements and sprites. Say what you will, but whether you build a tier 1 deck, a rogue deck, or a deck with just your favorite cards, not a single player goes into creating a serious deck with the express intent to lose. Winning may not be everything, but you're in full denial to say otherwise, and I'd like to invite you back to reality. It's okay. You're safe here with us. But that's going to wrap up today's discussion. I leave the floor open to you. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with the sentiment that broken cards should be as generic as possible for the health of the game, or did I get my masters in Yapology? Drop a comment down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.